a lever-action, quick-scoping shotgun has arrived in Black Ops Cold War, producing rage-inducing one-shot kills. The 410 Ironhide. Coming up. Hey, what is going on, fellas? It's Favstar. Well, the 410 Ironhide is gaining in popularity, and for a very good reason. High damage and good range. If you're looking for a versatile secondary, and a nice change of pace from the Akimbo Marshals, then look no further than the 410 Ironhide. In today's video, I'll break down the important stats, and reveal my favorite attachment loadout, which makes the Ironhide very viable even as a primary weapon, or a perfect accompaniment to your long-range AR or LMG. The in-game description describes the Ironhide as a high-damage lever-action shotgun with a reliable two-shot kill and a longer one-shot kill range when aiming down sight. We'll begin with a quick analysis of the base weapon without any attachments, and we'll start with damage profile. The Ironhide fires a buckshot shell containing eight pellets, and will deal a base damage for connecting with the enemy, and a bonus damage for every pellet that hits. Within the maximum damage range of 13 meters, the Ironhide deals a base damage of 80 HP, with a bonus damage of 10 HP per pellet hit. Connecting with all 8 pellets will deal 160 damage. As a result, we'll only need to connect with 7 pellets to secure the one-shot kill on a player with a full health of 150 HP. The damage drops off beyond 13 meters and you'll only deal a base damage of 75 with a bonus of 7 HP per pellet hit. Connecting with all 8 pellets will deal 131 HP of damage, resulting in a 2-shot kill. Beyond 19 meters, the damage drops off yet again, dealing a base damage of 64 and 5 HP per pellet, which results in a 2-3-shot to three shot kill, depending on how many pellets hit. At 24 meters and beyond, you'll no longer get a hit marker and won't deal any damage to the enemy. There is no benefit for headshots, as you'll deal the exact same damage, even if all pellets land to the head. Since pellets can pass between legs and under arms, your best point of aim is center chest, as this will provide the most reliable one-shot kills. The rate of fire is very slow at 63 rounds per minute, and in the event that two shots are required, the time to kill will be very slow at 952 milliseconds. When it comes to mobility, the Ironhide behaves as expected and you'll move at the standard shotgun movement speeds. The sprint out time is very slow at 400 milliseconds, however the ADS time of 230 milliseconds is best in class. In terms of accuracy, the idle sway is almost non-existent. Recoil is low and will prove inconsequential. Analyzing the pellet spread shows us that we can reliably land all eight pellets within about 20 meters without any weapon attachments, as long as our aim is on point and centered on the chest area. However, if our aim is off center, several pellets will miss and will deal reduced damage. Hip fire is poor, and although there is no hip fire movement penalty on the Ironhide, you'll need to be within about one meter to reliably connect with the required seven pellets in order to secure the one-shot kill. The default magazine capacity of six shells is ample to handle most engagements, even when encountering multiple enemies. The reload time, however, is slow and requires about 660 milliseconds per shell when topping up. The 410 Ironhide is a strong secondary with a good one-shot kill range and good ammo capacity. However, its slow fire rate will leave you vulnerable if you're unable to secure the kill with your first shot. 
We'll use our attachment slots to build a weapon specifically designed for reliable one-shot kills, capable of replacing our primary weapon in all close-range gunfights. My first attachment selection comes from the muzzle category. The infantry V-choke will tighten our ADS spread, ensuring we deal the most damage possible from longer engagement distances. The infantry V-choke's 33% improvement to our ADS pellet spread will provide more room for error as we can now be off-center with our aim and still land enough pellets to secure the one-shot kill. Our next attachment comes from the barrel category. The 22.3-inch Ranger barrel provides a 33% improvement to our maximum damage range at the expense of a reduction in our aim-walking movement speed. The Ranger barrel extends our one-shot kill range to an insane 17 meters, which means we can easily compete with SMGs in most shorter range lines of sight. Another very interesting attachment from the barrel category worth mentioning is the Task Force barrel, which provides a 10% damage boost while reducing our damage range by 17%. The unique damage profile of the Task Force Barrel provides reliable one-shot kills up close and only requires six pellets to secure the one-shot kill. This provides a hidden benefit to hipfire performance and will increase the likelihood of a hipfire kill by about 15%. However, the one-shot kill range of the Task Force only extends to about 15 meters, which gives the Ranger Barrel a two-meter range advantage. Our next attachment comes from the body category. The 5 milliwatt laser sight gives a much needed boost to our hip fire performance with a slight reduction in aim down sight time. Although we'll find much more success by aiming down sight, a run and gun shotgun class will often encounter unexpected enemies. The 35% benefit from the 5 milliwatt laser sight will significantly tighten our hip fire spread and improve our chances in close quarters. Next up, the Serpent Wrap provides a large improvement to our aim down sight time while only slightly reducing our sprint to fire time. The 25% improvement to our ADS speed provided by the Serpent Wrap will allow us to be even more aggressive and reduce the likelihood that we'll need to rely on hip fire. For our final attachment, we'll be choosing the No Stock, which provides the largest possible improvement to our sprint to fire time with a slight reduction in hip fire performance. The 40% sprint to fire improvement offered by the No Stock means we can confidently sprint when needed without the worry of being taken by surprise, allowing us to flank the enemy, secure easy kills, and compete head on with SMGs. That's my build for the 410 Ironhide Shotgun, a build designed to reward accuracy and be fully capable of functioning as a primary weapon. Once equipped with the correct attachments, the Ironhide easily becomes one of the most overpowered secondaries in Black Ops Cold War, and with an incredible one-shot kill range of 17 meters, is easily capable of functioning as a primary and creating many rage-inducing moments for the enemy team. Of course, this is all just my opinion, and now I'd like to hear from you guys. Is the Ironhide overpowered? And if so, what would you change to balance the weapon? Let me know in the comments section down below, and if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.